Home to over 185,000 animal species and 15,000 flowering plant species, Malaysia is the 12th richest megacenter for biodiversity in the world. But many of these species face the threat of extinction. In the last 15 years, Malaysia has lost around 60,000 species of life, and now 14% of Malaysia's mammals are listed by the World Conservation Union. IUCN as endangered. One of these species is the Malayan tiger. The Malayan tiger is found primarily in lowland forests throughout much of peninsular Malaysia. And although it is hard to accurately estimate the total population of Malayan tigers left in the wild, it is thought that there are only 500. These tigers are listed as totally protected species under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 meaning that it is illegal to kill or possess body parts of a tiger, but this protected status has only slowed down rather than reverse the decline in population. Only threats these tigers face are due to humans and human activities. Tiger bones, blood, sexual organs, and many other parts of the tiger are regularly used in traditional medicines and exotic dishes, making illegal trade of tiger parts a major threat to the growth of the Malayan tiger population. Illegal trade of tiger parts is considered to be the most urgent threat to tigers, as it has the greatest potential to do maximum harm in a short time. Another major threat to the Malayan tiger is the decline in prey. Their three main prey species are wild pigs, barking deer, and sambar deer, all of which are protected, but only to an extent. These species are highly sought after by hunters and can be legally hunted with a license and in a protected area. However, the large number of hunters abusing hunting licenses by hunting outside the hunting per period and exceeding the permitted limit as well as hunting without licenses and outside of protected areas, there is high poaching of these species. Wherever the homes of humans and tigers meet or overlap, humans are forced to compete with the tigers for space and food, causing conflict to arise, which usually results in the death of livestock, and even in rare cases, humans, with both events leading to the removal of the tiger. Between 1991 and 2006, about 2,400 complaints related to tigers were filed. These complaints included tigers attacking humans and livestock, as well as tiger sightings by villagers. 5% of land in Malaysia can support tigers, but there has been a loss of many lowland forests in the last century, causing a decline in the number of many large mammals, including the Malayan tiger. As the palm industry grows in Malaysia, more and more forests get cut down to make way for palm oil plantations, and thus the loss of habitat is a growing risk to the Malayan tiger. Despite all of these threats, conservation efforts for the Malayan tiger are abundant. Several NGOs, including World Wildlife Fund and the Wildlife Conservation Society, are working both with local governments and people to protect the Malayan tigers, for example, by educating villagers on the importance of tigers for the environmental balance and on livestock protection methods. Anti-poaching programs, which include regular patrols of tiger habitats, are instituted and the Endo Rompin National Park offers some sanctuary for tigers. Land swaps, where land has been traded with those planning to develop plantations in the rainforest for open areas where tigers are absent have also been put into place in hopes to protect the Malayan tiger's habitat. The Malaysian Conservation Alliance for Tigers focuses primarily on protecting the Malayan tiger. Not only do they have a national tiger action plan to help protect the Malayan tiger, but they also provide a 24-hour wildlife hotline where anyone can report suspected wildlife crimes. And they also sell merchandise with the proceeds going to support the Malayan tigers. Hi, I'm with Mr. Callan, the middle school principal at ISKL. Um, are you aware of the situation in the, at the moment in regards to the Malaysian tiger? I'm aware of it. Um, I, I know that they're an endangered species, is that true? Yes. Because we're messing with their habitat? 
So I guess I do know a little bit about it, but not a lot. Is Ice Hill doing anything with the conservation of islands? Do we have in the past? Absolutely, but not specifically for the tigers for a while. Do you know if anything is planned in the future? Um, for specifically for tigers, I, I, I don't think. But um, what, what we're doing is we're completely revamping our, our student council um, to make it more community service focused, uh, community learning, uh, service learning I should say. So what we want to do is, is, is we want to create kind of that micro loan institution through our student council so if people do want to raise money for you know conservation of tigers and stuff and they have some kind of idea they can come and apply for funds long answer to a little question but you know specifically for the tigers not necessarily but I think we're creating a systematic sustainable structure that will be able to help many things including people who are passionate about conservation of tigers. Thank you very much. You're